Then do both. How many terms do we have, by the way? Just so we get that down. You have two. We don't have one, two, three. We don't have six, right? Terms are separated by pluses and minuses. So one, two terms. We say, okay, what number divides both of these numbers? The biggest one. Greatest means biggest. What's the biggest one? Four. four. So we're going to factor out a four. Now, here's how you do that. What you're going to do is we're going to take that four and we're going to put it right out front. So we know four divides both of them. Then we look for any variables that may or may not divide. So we look at our a's. Do they have any a's in common? Yes. yes. How many? A or a squared? A. Just the a. This one has an a squared, but this one only has an a. So you've got to take the biggest one that's common to both. That is the greatest common shared factor. So we're going to write an a over here. Okie dokie. Is there anything else? B. 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 Hey, B is shared by both of them. So we're going to write that. This right here, which you just wrote down, is your greatest common factor. The 4 goes into both, the A goes into both, the B goes into both, and that's everything that they share. Are you still with me? Okay. The next thing we do is we write a parenthesis, because factoring is the opposite of distribution. Instead of multiplying in, we are dividing out. That means we're going to be creating parentheses. You might be wondering why in the world would you want to create parentheses. But I'll show you later on that problem why we have to have those, okay? So we're dividing out, we are factoring out, we are creating parentheses. What we're going to put in here is the quotient of this and our greatest common factor, and this term and our greatest common factor. If you're good at this, you don't need to do any work other than in your head. If you're not so great at this, I'll give you a method on how to find these things. Here's what you do. You're going to write down your very first term. Some of you probably already know how to do this very well. And you're going to divide, because factoring is dividing by your greatest common factor. You've done things like this before, right? That's why you're in this class, because you've done that. Uh, what do we do here? How much is the 8 divided by the 4? 2. two. So this is going to give us 2. OK. Those are gone. How about the A's? What happens with the A's? One A, where is it? On top. top. So this is an A. And then the B's? What happens with the B's? They're completely gone, yeah. So guess what? We have a 2 and an A. 2A. This, this is going to be worth it. What's going to go after the 2A? Minus, minus. Minus, OK, very good. We have to have the minus. And then in order to figure out what goes here, we do the same thing with the second term. You can do this as well. We'll take our 4AB. We'll divide it by our greatest common factor, 4AB. But guess what? We have the same thing over the same thing. How much is the same thing being divided by the same thing? That's always 1. This is going to go. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Can you check your work? Mm -hmm. Sure, you know what? <coughs> if you distribute it, which is you know the reverse of our, our factor here, we get our 8a squared b, and we have minus 4ab. So this proves to us that we've just done our factoring correctly. Okay. Do you feel good about something like that doing the greatest common factor? Now we go down here and we, we do this thing, check if factors can be factored. We would Check this, that can't be factored, then you may have plus or minus. That's just it. That's our, our term. We check this. This has two terms, so it would fall into one of these. Is it a difference of squares, a difference of cubes, or a sum of cubes? Well, let's see. It can't possibly be the sum of cubes, right? Because it doesn't have a plus, has a minus. Is it a difference of squares? Do you see a little power two anywhere? Then chances are it's probably not a difference of squares. It can't be a difference of cubes, there's no power 3 anywhere. This can't be factored. You're just done on this problem. There's no other greatest common factor. We just took care of that. This is completely factored right here. You still with me? Okay. Let's move on to another one. So let's say, we just conquered that problem, let's say we have something like this, 36x squared minus 9.
Tell me, folks, what is the first thing that you're going to do? Are you going to start counting the number of terms first? No. Does that matter at this particular point right now? No. No, you're going to look for what first everybody? What are you going to look for first? Please, please look for that. Look for the greatest common factor first. Do this on your own right now. We just practiced that. What I want you to do right now, find the greatest common factor and factor it out. You don't have to say it out loud. Just do it on your own right now. What did you find as your greatest common factor? Did you find anything? <coughs> what I'm asking you is what number goes into both these terms? Nine. Nine does, yeah. Let's factor out the nine. So if we factor out the nine, what happens is we have this nine, and then we're going to have a parenthesis, factoring is creating parentheses. Inside here we're dividing, what's 36x squared divided by nine? Good, you still have x squared, don't you? Yes. Minus how much? One. Okay, cool. Now, the one of the... The asterisk there at the very end of it said, you need to check to see if your factors are factorable still. Now the 9, of course, has just our number. But in here, that has two terms. Can we identify it as a difference of squares or sum of squares or sum or difference of cubes? What do you think? Does it have a chance of being a difference of squares? No. Yeah. Yeah, squares. Do you see a square up there? You may want to check. What you have to think of now is, can you write these two terms as something squared and something squared. Here's how the difference of squares works. Remember it was a squared minus b squared. I need to write this as something squared, something squared. Now I'm going to ignore the 9 for a second. I'm going to look just at the 4x squared. Can you write 4x squared as some quantity yeah. squared? 2x. Okay, so 2x two, two squared like this? Yeah. Uh, just no, two it's two it has to have a square. Has to have a square. 2x. 2x. How can I make this equal that? Square the whole thing. Ah. Does that work? Yes. yes. Is that 4x squared? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Minus, now wait a second, 1. How can I write 1 as something squared? Think about it for a second. 1 squared, squared is 1. Oh, well, one, yeah, 1 squared. Well, that doesn't make a difference, right? 1 to the second power is still 1. So watch what we're doing here. Now, by the way, you are going to be able to do this in your heads for most of this uh, without even having to worry about this step. Right now I'm showing you why it works, okay? But do you see how this form is the same as that form? How we have something squared minus something squared, and here we have something squared minus something squared. Are you, are you with me on this so far? Yes. What we said over here is this is just going to be A minus B, A plus B. Can you tell me what takes the place of our A over here? What takes the place of our B over here? One. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. Something squared, oh, something. 2x. Something squared, oh, something. This is our A, this is our B. So if we write out the next step, what we're going to have is, look at, we're just using the form over here. A minus B, A plus B. Only now we just have to identify what was our A, what's our B. In our case, our A was 2x. Look what we're going to do. Our 2x goes here and here. Do you see where that 2x is coming from? Not your head if you do. I need to know if you know that. See where that 2x is coming from. It's right here. just going in both spots just like our A did. Now our 1 is our B. Our 1 is just going to go here and here. Hey, you're done. Isn't that kind of awesome? You can distribute this. 2x times 2x is how much? Bam. Look at you're going to get positive 2x and minus 2x. What's going to happen to those That's terms? And you're going to get a minus 1 at the very end. That's this minus 1. How many people feel okay with this so far? Good. Last thing i got to show you, what happens to the 9? The 9 doesn't just disappear, right? Don't ignore that 9. Our final answer, would, if we have everything down, so the 9 is going to come down here, we'll have our, our 9. 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1, we are completely flattered, flattered, we're flattered here, <laughs> completely flattered, completely factored, and we're, we're done. How many of you understand what we talked about today?
Good deal, good deal. Uh, we, we haven't gone far enough for me to give you a whole bunch of homework, so today's one day that we're not going to have anything assigned. Uh, we will start back on this tomorrow. I'll teach you some more factoring. You guys have a great day. All right, so yesterday we, we were factoring. We learned how to factor. What's the first thing you do when you're factoring, by the way? The very first thing you check. Before you start counting terms and all that stuff, you do this. That's right. Greatest common factor is a big deal for us. Um, so with that in mind, well, actually, let's practice one real quick before we start going on to those. <clears throat> I think we did this one last time. Is that is that right? Yes. Okay, we worked that one all the way down, right? Yeah. Let's practice one more that's similar to that. Y squared minus 16. Now, I know the first thing we do is we check for the greatest common factor. When you look up here, does this one have a greatest common factor of these ter two terms? No. Well, not besides one, right? I mean, there's no other number that divides it, and there's no common variable. So we really can't factor greatest common factor out of this thing. This is one of those cases where it doesn't have one. But the next thing we do is count the number of terms. Again, how many terms do we have in this polynomial? Okay. If we have two terms, there's three options. We can be, what were those three options? Should be on your, your notes from last time. That's one of them. Difference cubes or? If it's not one of those three, you can't factor it. Is this one of those three? Yes. Well, wait a second. I see this is squared, but this one's not squared. How do you know? How come that's difference of squares still? It's 16. Okay. So if we can write it as a difference of squares, then it is a difference of squares. So we can say this is y squared minus, maybe we write this as 4 squared. If we write that as 4 squared, then we see this fits this, this model that we have of a squared minus b squared. And we know that that's factorable. This I gave you the form last time as a minus b, a plus b. Let's practice this one more time. In this case, what is taking the place of our a? One. Good. What's taking the place of our B? Four. So if we follow this pattern, can you tell me how this is going to be factored? Remember, we're factoring, so we're creating parentheses here. What's the first thing we're going to write down? Y minus four. Good. Y minus four. Notice how Y is our A and four is our B. We have exactly the same thing there. And what's the next one? Y plus four. Are you starting to see that these signs have to alternate in order for a difference of squares to work? This is the middle terms canceling out. That's what those different signs are doing. You get the y squared plus 4y minus 4y. That's where they disappear. And we have the minus 16. How many of you feel okay with, with this example so far? Good deal. Let's try one more before we go any further. How about this one? y squared plus 25. Firstly, is there a greatest common factor to it? No. All right. So we count the number of terms. terms. How many terms does it have? Yeah. Different squares? No. Yeah. No. Think carefully five. about it. Yeah, you can write the 5, or the 25 as a 5 squared, can't you? Yes. You'd have y squared plus 5 squared. But is it a difference of squares? No. no. Do we have anything that says sum of squares? <laughs> This yeah. is not factorable. We have some cubes. Yeah, we have some cubes. But this isn't a cube. We have nothing to factor this. If you really think about it, could you factor it as, we'll try one. Could you factor it as y plus 5 and y plus 5? No, because you're going to get 10y. You're going to get 10y. That's right. You get y squared, 5y, and another 5y. That gives you 10y. That's not this. What about if I change this to 